now joined by uh, Corning Republican Congressman Tom Reed. Congressman, thank you for calling in. Oh, thanks for having us, uh, Brian. As always, good to be with you. Well, Congressman, uh, you have uh, you have some uh, new legislation to uh, financially compensate uh, nurses and other workers who work so hard during the uh, COVID crisis we've been going through. I, I do. Uh, I've been joined in a bipartisan uh, manner uh, with uh, two Democratic uh, colleagues, one from New Jersey, and um, and uh, we're working with folks in Arizona. But anyway, it's uh, it's a bipartisan piece of legislation to reward the American worker uh, during this crisis. And as we debate uh, the additional economic stimulus checks, uh, you know, if you recall, everyone got a check uh, the last go around uh, twelve hundred dollars for essentially having a social security number. And my thought process is is you know, our healthcare workers, our grocery store operators, our convenient clerks that I was with yesterday, for example, uh, they all answered the call uh, during this crisis. They showed up. Uh, they truly are the best of America workers. And so what we are proposing is essentially for the uh, folks making $35,000, um, a $3,000 uh, economic stimulus check to say thank you uh, to that work out there, to those workers to say thank you for answering the call and staying and staying on the job during this crisis. Congressman Reed, both sides, Republican and Democrat, have uh, accused uh, each other of uh, putting a lot of unnecessary, I wouldn't even call it pork, I mean unnecessary, uh, wasteful spending that has nothing to do with the COVID-19 legislation. Uh, Mitch McConnell got accused of that. Nancy Pelosi got accused of that. Uh, you're on the Problem Solvers Caucus, uh, which is a bipartisan group. What do you make of those accusations of waste uh, and uh, your thoughts there? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, part of the problem. Uh, as you see, you know, you saw the House bill, for example, the, the recent uh, HEROES Act, uh, quote-unquote, as they called it, uh, had multiple uh, pieces of legislation completely unrelated uh, to the coronavirus. I think it mentioned the word marijuana uh, more times uh, than it did the word jobs uh, in America. And uh, I'll just tell you, that shows you the prioritization of some folks at D.C. who don't want to focus on the crisis. They want to use it as an opportunity uh, to implement uh, their proposals, their way of life, if you would. And uh, that, that's a problem, and that, that is what we should avoid. I will tell you in the beginning, uh, when you look at phase one, two, three, vast majority uh, of that was focused uh, on the coronavirus situation, and that's why I think it brought such bipartisan support. But even in those uh, proposals, you saw the Kennedy Center, you saw other issues that were snuck in uh, in the uh, uh, package uh, without really any public review. That's why I called for Congress to go back to D.C., do its job, open up, and if we can't do it in person, like Pelosi, because Pelosi won't let us, uh, we should at least use technology uh, to vet these proposals bring sunlight to them, and uh, make sure that what we're doing is all related to the coronavirus situation and getting our country back up and running and growing again. Congressman Reed, are you still doing the fill-in work for the Buffalo Congressman Chris Collins seat? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, always looked uh, beyond uh, our congressional district lines. Obviously, our priority is the the district and the constituents of the district. But in particular, we uh, have reached out uh, to folks from Buffalo to Rochester and said, we're here. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, and uh, and they've taken us up on that offer, and we're proud to do it because at the end of the day, uh, we're all uh, New York uh, residents. We're all American citizens. And that's where working together, working across those lines, uh, is when we are at our best. And so we do our weekly uh, local officials and state official uh, call. We've been working uh, with those state uh, elected officials and local officials to be a resource for them at the federal level. And, you know, I think it's not just about, um, you know, helping them out, but it's about sharing with each other the, the, the resources that we have and making sure that we're collaborating and coordinating and communicating so that we not only keep the region open in particular, but that we continue to work together to develop stronger relationships and share with each other our best practices and those best ideas and brightest minds that uh, are often outside of our district lines. 
the reason I asked you that, Congressman Reed, if you were still doing fill-in work for the Buffalo Congressman Chris Collins seat, uh, the protests have gotten pretty violent in uh, Buffalo. I'm sure, as you know, uh, a state police officer and a Buffalo City police officer were standing, uh, I don't know if it was on a street or a sidewalk, but they were uh, rammed by a, a rioter's vehicle. I'm wondering, have you been approached by anyone about the rioting in Buffalo? Well, you know, that's uh, Brian Higgins' district, uh, so he is okay. in office, and he's been taking a lot of uh, uh, those um, uh, leads in regards to it. Uh, but we have, uh, you know, yesterday I was doing a Zoom call uh, with some of the leaders uh, in Buffalo um, to talk about you know, not only the economic recovery uh, that we so desperately need, the jobs and reopening uh, the area, but also this uh, impact of the riots in regards to what that's doing. And I got to tell you, I mean, we are going through a very testing time in our nation's history. You have the coronavirus, you have the economic crisis, and now you have this uh, uh, racial crisis uh, that is going off. And I think everybody can agree, you know, that we can all agree uh, that if you want to protest, um, that is our God-given right as uh, Americans for free, uh, based on our freedoms. But you cannot riot. You cannot commit violence. And also, during this course of time, you got to recognize that our men and women of law enforcement are good, honorable people. They do have bad apples. Uh, what we saw in Minneapolis was a representation of a bad apple uh, who needs to be held to account and justice needs to be done. But you cannot attack our men and women in law enforcement. You cannot uh, go to the level of violence that we're seeing in the streets of America. That must be condemned. That must be called out. And uh, we can stand together And when it comes to protesting and working together and listening to each other to overcome uh, this uh, issue of div uh, division and hatred uh, that you see uh, in America. But you cannot, you cannot resort to violence and encourage that to occur. Uh, state police put out a statement uh, criticizing the governor and his stance uh, on this uh, situation. It seems like the governor... Um is pretty much siding with the protest movement in New York State on this issue. Did you have any thoughts there? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I was just on Joe Piscopo's uh, show this morning talking about this because obviously, you know, he, uh, the governor attacked an, an NYPD and uh, directly went after the NYPD. And a lot of this, I think, is driven by the governor's ego uh, when it comes to his inability to work with uh, Mayor de Blasio. Uh, but it also showed the governor's true colors when he attacked uh, the NYPD and uh, to me, that's offensive. Uh, that is not where the blame lies. Uh, the blame lies in the lack of leadership in regards to calling out the rioters, calling out the looters, making sure that you lead by example and, and go into the protest uh, and, and either virtually or physically and say, hey, you know what, we're with you. You know, the most inspiring pictures and images that I've seen during this time uh, was the sheriff of Flint, Michigan. Uh, was the NYPD police captain who was standing with the peaceful protesters and saying, we understand your frustration. We want to hear from you. And, you know, you've seen me at our town halls. I've seen the hatred. I have seen the extremism firsthand. I've had a four-year-old cussing at me, spitting on me by the encouragement of her father. You have to stand up to that extremism, and you must lead, as Martin Luther King taught us, you must lead with civil disobedience, but you do not lead with violence and hatred. That will not accomplish anything positive. And so Governor Cuomo is just doubling down in regards to his hatred of Mayor de Blasio, I think, and his ego uh, blinding him uh, from doing what's right, standing with the NYPD, calling out uh, the bad actors, and then embracing uh, those protesters in the sense of what you see with the Flint, Michigan uh, chief and the NYPD captain who actually took the time to actually empathize and listen uh, to the folks that are expressing their First Amendment rights. Quick follow-up question for you, Congressman Tom Reed. You said you were uh, spit on by a four-year-old. Can I ask what town that happened in? Yeah, that was in Chautauqua County during uh, uh, the protests that happened right after, you know, we were the only Republican doing town halls right after President Trump's uh, inauguration. And uh, if you remember those visuals, and they're all, you know, they're out there. Um, we had thousands of people coming to our town hall, and I can vividly, I still see it in my mind. Uh, the four-year-old was on her father's shoulders and literally three feet, two feet away from me and just screaming. And, and, it, and the father was encouraging the four-year-old to cuss at me and, to, and, and essentially spit on me. And, 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 and I'll just tell you, 
that type of extremism, that type of behavior is completely unacceptable. But as I hope I demonstrated, I demonstrated restraint. I demonstrated I know who I am. I know what I believe in, but I'm willing to listen to anyone. And I will stand in the middle uh, of the crowd, uh, quote unquote, because it's the right thing to do. We must stand firm, but at the same time, we must stand with open arms and open eyes and ears and listen uh, to the folks that are there to express themselves in a peaceful, responsible way. Wow, four-year-old girl. Wow, uh, Congressman, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get back to the COVID for a moment. The, uh, the unemployment claims situation. Uh, I know we ask this question every time you're on. Has there been any improvement on the speed in which unemployment claims are taken care of? I think there has been. Uh, talking to our state partners, uh, Phil Palmisano and Tom O'Mara, on a regular basis, and other uh, state officials from across uh, the region, um, I think. Uh, uh, there's been an improvement there. Um, they've uh, deployed some additional technology, uh, but also I think they're just weeding through uh, the numbers. And as we continue to go uh, through the process, you know, we still have a lot of uh, hiccups. We're still a resource uh, to connect people, um, especially those that are self-employed and others that have not typically uh, been that uh, uh, check-the-box type of application that the unemployment offices are, are used to. Uh, they need still more assistance. Uh, but it is slowly uh, getting better. And my my ultimate goal, uh, obviously, the way you cure the unemployment situation uh, at the office is you get people back to work. People want to work. I still believe in the American work ethic. I still believe people uh, want to have a job to control their own destiny. I, I firmly believe that. And so the, the best way to solve this problem is to grow the economy, get people back to work, and enjoy the uh, economic prosperity uh, that we were having uh, up until this coronavirus took hold. Talking with uh, Corning Republican uh, Congressman Tom Reed live on Newsmaker this morning. Um, see, on the you uh, gave an interview to the uh, Lansing Star, and they quoted you there. Um, here's a quote from you: "Other states are honoring the legislative intent of the CARES Act One." that distributes the money to local governments, Reed said. Uh, if you could uh, tell us about that statement, and also what's the CARES Act one? Yeah, so that's the original uh, um, coronavirus package, if you would, the uh, $3 trillion uh, of additional uh, assistance uh, that came through Washington, D.C. a couple months ago, or you know, 30 days ago. Time seems to be blending all together. And what, what we did there is we provided $150 billion of relief to our state uh, governments and our local governments. And the intent uh, in part of that package, that $3 trillion of uh, assistance, uh, was to have the states uh, take some of that money and share it and distribute it to our local governments. And some states have honored that legislative intent, have uh, um, moved forward uh, with that delivery of money to their local governments. But obviously in New York State, uh, we have a governor, I think, who has uh, uh, this fiscal uh, crisis that's been created uh, under his watch. Uh, you know, the $6 billion deficit uh, that was in existence prior uh, to the coronavirus uh, crisis. And uh, he's holding that money. Uh, he's holding that money in, in the state capital. You know, we see him doing it with uh, child care uh, money. We see him doing it with community development uh, block grant uh, money. We're seeing him doing it with education money. And he's holding this cash uh, that was supposed to go to Albany, uh, but then be in part distributed to our local governments to help them through uh, this crisis situation. And we're not going to let him get away with that. You know, we have $750 million uh, of testing uh, money that the, the governor has received. And as he put this uh, burden on our nursing homes in regards to this twice a week testing uh, requirement, uh, there's been no money uh, from the state uh, to assist in that, uh, to give uh, that resource in part uh, to the nursing home staffers uh, that are undergoing this testing. And then on top of that, he's sending in state employees uh, to the nursing home facilities with no testing requirement. So he's putting a testing requirement on the nursing home staff and then sending in his state employees that have no test and creating a risk to our seniors. So I don't understand the logic here other than he, he's trying to atone, I guess, for the horrific decision uh, that where he ordered positive 19, COVID-19 senior citizens into nursing homes from the hospital, uh, that they had to be directed. They, there was no discretion. Uh, they, the nursing homes could not screen 
uh, those senior citizens. They, the nursing homes had to take those COVID-19 positive patients, those seniors, and put them in the nursing home setting. That was putting gasoline uh, into uh, the tinderbox. I mean, our nursing homes and our senior citizens are the most susceptible people to this virus. And by ordering po- COVID-19 coronavirus positive senior citizens into the nursing home setting, uh, that, to me, uh, is one of the things as we get more and more information on this. That led to 6,800 seniors' deaths, and no one's asking the question in Albany. No one is holding the governor accountable to that horrific policy decision uh, that uh, he did on his watch, that he did unilaterally because, you know, well, for whatever reason, uh, it was his way or the highway, and that's the way he wanted it to go down. Talking with uh, Congressman Tom Reed, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back. Got a lot more questions for Congressman Reed. Stay with us. The Ryan Agencies, your local, independent insurance agencies. With insurance, it's not just about the price. You want value. The Ryan Agency works to find the best price, coverage, and service. Finding insurance that matches your needs and budget. Save smart. Contact the Ryan Agencies today for your best insurance value. Insurance protection you can rely on. The Ryan Agency. Your health is more important than ever. So at UR Medicine, we have new ways to stay healthy and safe. With telemedicine, access your medical team from home. And we've redesigned in-person visits to maximize your safety. With symptom screenings, reconfigured waiting areas, rigorous disinfection, and masks for everyone. It's UR Medicine redesigned. The access you need, the safety you expect. Visit redesigned.urmc.edu. Back with Congressman Tom Reed. Uh, Congressman, what do you make of, and I've seen a lot of complaints on Facebook about this, uh, mayors in New York State who will allow and tolerate large groups of people standing very, very close to each other, breaking the uh, social distancing rules during COVID-19. I've seen a lot of memes and uh, pictures and complaints on Facebook from people saying, hey, you know, we have to go out and wear masks, but these protest masks and stand six feet apart, but the protesters are allowed to stand as close as they want to without getting too close or uh, without wearing masks. What do you make of that? Well, it it shows you uh, really uh, the lack of leadership uh, that uh, we need uh, in today's uh, elected officials. Uh, What we need is look at, you know, if you're going to have these standards, you need to enforce those standards. But at the same time, uh, you need to recognize that um, you can't pick uh, those winners and losers. Uh, you can't pick as elected officials to say, okay, well, that cause is just, so we're going to say it's okay here. You know, we had these protests in regards to the lockdown orders, and you saw those same mayors and those same uh, elected officials at the state level and elsewhere saying, you know what, it's a shame. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you're putting lives at risk. You're, you know, criticizing those that were peacefully protesting uh, their First Amendment rights. But then at the same time, uh, when this goes down, uh, they're not uh, criticizing uh, those protesters. That, that is what one of the fundamental things I think American people uh, get frustrated with is the hypocrisy. Uh, and what that articulates is that hypocrisy uh, that is on display. And, and so just as uh, they have a right to peacefully protest today, uh, they had a right to peacefully protest yesterday. And they will have a right to peacefully protest tomorrow. And so, Brian, that, that is where uh, those leaders who know who they are, that they're not pandering to the political moment, that they're not um, just uh, trying to take the easy path uh, because it's the path uh, that's uh, most resistant or least resistant to them. Uh, those are the officials that don't, uh, in, t- in my opinion, uh, we should not be um, putting forward as examples of leadership. What we need are firm leaders who are, uh, comfortable in knowing who they are, uh, that they're comfortable in recognizing that when you protest one day, uh, you have the right to protest that day, and you have the right to protest in the future. And as we deal with the COVID-19 situation, I think we have to recognize that we are still American uh, citizens with God-given freedoms uh, at our heart, and uh, we have to accommodate both of those uh, situations as best as we possibly can. And when you force people uh, to uh, to have to live uh, by those rules, uh, often you see that that's a limited result. Uh, what you need to do is uh, have the American people's wisdom of innovation and freedom uh, be the beacon 
uh, of leadership. It's the American people. When you teach them and explain to them and actually have a conversation with them and you actually listen to them, it is amazing to me the resiliency and the leadership of the American people in regards to they say, well, that makes sense, and we're going to do that because now I understand uh, where you're leading us and what you're trying to do. And once you get that commitment, that really moves the ball in regards to not only the coronavirus situation, but in my opinion, that's how you unite the energy of the most powerful force that's ever existed in the history of the world, and that's the force of the American people and their freedom uh, that we uh, so uh, cherish here in America. Down to the last, uh, down to the last three minutes with uh, Congressman Tom Reed. Congressman, I've heard people say this. I wonder what your opinion was on it. Do you think that the COVID nineteen um, has been going on so long, the, the lo- you know, the lockdown, although they have been in the process of uh, phase one and phase two of the reopening. But do you think that uh, some some of this pent-up anger that people have being cooped up inside, not being able to go out in many cases, has contributed to the problems that we see in some of the protests statewide? Oh, I, I think absolutely. Uh, that is a piece of the uh, recipe uh, of the frustration and anger you see. But at its heart, I do believe what what that video depicted in Minneapolis was horrific. Uh, that was the murder of an individual by a bad uh, apple uh, in law enforcement. And that individual and uh, others, uh, those that are responsible, must be held to account and justice must be done. Uh, but uh, when you have the perfect recipe of that pent-up uh, anger uh, from that lockdown situation, then you have the pent-up anger of the economic devastation crisis that's going on, people losing their jobs and the inability to control their own destiny because of their own hard work ethic and their ability to have a job and to have that dignity of work that goes with it. Um, I think it's, it was a perfect recipe, and it is a perfect recipe for uh, this frustration uh, that has all come together, and you see seeing people going to the streets and saying, enough is enough. And, um, and that is not to discount any one of those things, but it's to recognize the reality of the situation that we find ourselves in. And my hope is, uh, as elected officials, uh, that uh, those that can uh, see through uh, that storm uh, will be the ones that set the tone for how we get through this and get to the other side in a stronger fashion. Down to the last 60 seconds. Any final thoughts, Congressman Reed? Well, you know, as we go through this, I think, uh, you know, we have been able to demonstrate here in western New York in particular uh, when it comes to the George Floyd uh, situation you know, we've had some situations where potential rioting was going to occur in some of our cities of the district. Uh, but the way that they've been handled uh, by people, the grassroots, uh, working with law enforcement, law enforcement working with the organizers of the protest, working with leaders of the community, that is the way I hope uh, we demonstrate to the rest of the country. This is how you do it. You, know, you don't destroy your backyard. You don't destroy your local businesses. You don't destroy that which uh, uh, we all are proud of as community uh, as community here in western new york and uh, hopefully that will send a message to the rest of the nation this is how we get through these times coming together and being united in one voice to stand strong congressman tom reed always good talking with you uh thank you for calling in this morning great to be with you thanks brian Today at 1480 wlea hornell alfred state history professor dr nick waddy coming up next